What's up, MMA fans? Today we are catching up with Cesar Carneiro and Daniel Valverde, and also with a special guest, Kobe Covington. Uh, Kobe, how are, tra how are your trainings for, for that fight, that revenge against Kamaru Usman? Training's great. You know, I, I've, we've, we've improved a lot, you know, since the last time I fought him. You know, it was a different, different game plan, different coaches, people that didn't care about me. They just wanted, you know, the paychecks. Now I have Caesar and Daniel who are my family. They're my brothers. They actually care about me. They don't care about the money. It's not about the money. It's about the legacy. It's about making our, our history and our mark on this sport. And I feel better than ever, man. You're going to see it on November 6th when I rematch him on pay-per-view that you're going to see the best Kobe Chaos coming to 2.0 along with MMA Masters. We're going to take over the world and the UFC. Uh, if you have to bet in the results, which one would be? You're going to finish him before five rounds or, or, or it's going to be like a five rounds war like the last time? We're going to finish him. We, we just have a better game plan now. Caesars came up with my striking that just – he's not going to see the timing that I have in my, in my, in my skill set now. And I didn't have timing before when I fought him before. It was just all volume, all just trying to put intensity on him. Now we're strategic. We have a good game plan. And if it goes to the mat, you know, I'm going to engage with my judo that I've learned from Coach Valverde. And he's helped me with my takedowns, my trips, my sweeps, and my submission game. It's completely different from Valverde. You know, he's the best black belt in the world. And I still have an open challenge to any coach out there that $100,000 I'm putting up on my money against Valverde. Someone try to choke him. They got no chance. <laughs> Great, man. Uh, when you look back to your fight with Kamaru Usman, Which mistake you, you, you think you committed, Kobe? The biggest mistake was keeping my hands down, uh, taking a lot of unanswered shots, and just no head movement. You know, now I'm working with Coach Cesar, and, and we're working real hard on our head movement and our timing. And I didn't have those things before. I didn't know how to move my head, and I didn't know how to have the right timing. So now we put all these pieces together. You know, the puzzle is solved. And November 6th, we're going to go show that in front of the world. Uh, any, any fights in your plan if you beat Kamaru Usman and get the title again? Uh, do you have anyone that you would like to fight next? Yeah, the, you know, the, the, the next fight that needs to happen is Dustin Sorier. You know, Dustin Poirier, <laughs> you know, he's this fake nice guy. He thinks he's a charitable guy when everybody knows he's using his charity as a tax write-off. But he talked a lot of shit in the media. He said it's on site when he sees me. He's going to fuck up Colby, this and that. Okay, you said a lot of things to the media, Dustin. Come back it up in the UFC octagon. Great. Colby, thanks a lot for your time, man. Go, uh, I know you're, you're finishing your training, so go ahead and thanks a lot for your time. Pleasure ah, to have you here. Best coaches in the game right here, baby. You, November 6th, we're going to show it. What? What? Let's go. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. So he, he, he told that exactly what he's going to do. What you guys have to compliment about what he said? I mean, yeah, man. That, myself, that's what we've been working uh, uh, to improve Kobe's game. Like we said before, like we know, we know, we know, try to change his game. You try to make a better Kobe Kobito. He's fighting smarter. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, and just to try to make him better. He's a better fighter, more confident. Uh, uh, he knows when he steps in the cage, he's going to know everything that he's going to have to do to win the fight. Exactly. And, and, one, thing, one, and one thing that we, we, we do with our fighters is um, when we train, for example, me, when I train the guys, I already uh, I, I mimic the guy, the, the opponent. I do everything the guy does it. And I do mitts like that. I don't just go and do a ah, jab cross and a hook cross. And I don't do that. I, I, I imitate the guy. And I, I, I do things that the guy does it. And I, I tell him what I want him to do. So and then we do a thousand times. Become a second nature. I don't think anymore. It's just become a second nature. And he trains like the way he's going to fight. He's not going to open that much anymore the way he did. You know, he opened too much, threw a lot of punch like he said right now. And we're not going to do that. We're going to do everything like on the right timing. Everything's going to be perfect. You know, distance, everything's going to be right. Because we trained like that for a year and a half already. The same exact way that he's going to fight. That's how he's going to fight. The way he trains every day. Great. So his part is going to be even better because he's not going to throw that, that many techniques. So, you know what I mean? He's going to be more effective. 
Great. Let's talk about uh, Cesar Mutante. He's going to fight uh, on August 27. He's going to fight the semi-final of the PFL Grand Prix against Martin Hamlet. Uh, how you guys plan that fight? How you guys see that fight? I mean, uh, unfortunately, Cesar had some problems in uh, the, the, the last fight, but now his body's feeling better. He has some injuries. Now his, his body's feeling better. We know the guy, his opponents are very strong. Uh, he throws some bombs. He, he's going to try to engage with Cesar, try to take Cesar down against the cage. That's his, he's a wrestler at the end of the day. So we've been training a lot, getting ready for this guy. You know, uh, uh, Cesar's a great wrestler too, you know, and, uh, and uh, make sure that, that, that we know the guy's going to start very strong, but eventually the guy's going to slow down. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't keep the same pace, you know, he's going to slow down. So Cesar, uh, he's been training a lot of his, his strike with Cesar Carnero, and, uh, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be ready. Yeah, 100% of what we do, you know, we know exactly what the guy does. The guy likes to engage a lot in the, in the cage, you know, and he likes to, to, he's a wrestler. We already know, we have a lot of great wrestlers here. So we do exactly what Cesar is going to do in his fight, and exactly what the guy does to, to, to is going to, first of all, he, he really thinks that he's going to have the same Cesar he yeah. saw the last fight. Yes. He's wrong. I want him to come like that with all the, the energy yeah. and waste his, all his energy in the first round. And then he's going to see what's going to happen. And we know the guy's going to start very strong. He's going to throw, like, uh, he's powerful, you know, especially in the beginning. Cesar has to be very careful. We're not going to begin the fight. Uh, what about the other side of the bracket? We have uh, Emiliano Sorge, the former champion of, uh, of 19. And, uh, and Cara de Sapato, how do you see that fight going? I mean, I, I believe Antonio Cara de Sapato is going to be the winner. You know, uh, he's a, besides, he's a, he's a super nice guy. And I think he's just a better athlete. He's a better fighter than, than, than you know, the other guys, the champion, respect him too. But I just, uh, I hope and I believe that the Cara de Sapato is going to gonna pull a submission from that. Yeah, I, I just think that I don't think the guy has enough to beat Karen Zapato. I don't think the guy has enough. Mm-hmm. He exposed himself too much for a guy like, like him, like Karen Zapato. Karen Zapato is a guy that, you know, like you close your eyes, he's going to be there. A great jiu-jitsu too. So, I mean, if the guy opens a lot, you know, he fights like, you know, opens. I'm not going to take any you know, credit for him. You know, he's an amazing fighter. But I think, I think Karen Zapato is going to finish him. I think so. That's my opinion. Karen Sapato has improved a lot his game too, his, uh, his wrestling, his takedowns, especially when he pushes guys against the cage. He's very strong now. And uh, you know when they get the guy down, the guy probably gives the back. And one mistake you make against a guy like Karen Sapato, you pay for him. Exactly. He doesn't open that much. He's very careful what he does. It. So I think he's going to win for sure. So your guys bet is uh, in a one million final for Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I hope Zapata so. and Cesar Mutante. <laughs> for sure, it's gonna I be great so, for both of them. Yeah, it's gonna be All great. Of us. They're both great guys, and uh, exactly. in Brazil, I deserve to have this final. And you guys just opened a new MMA master. Tell us uh, where is the address, everything that someone from Sherdog that is visiting Miami want to to. Yeah, uh, we're, here, we're, here, we're here in a new location. It's been six months. It's been great, Marcelo. Much better location, bigger. You know, have an a, a official UFC cage, uh, like a, a big workout room, like a, like a huge room, actually, for workout, big mats. Um, I'll have some dorms for fighters that come from, from overseas to do the camps. And uh, the location just amazed. We right off Palmeiro and by Miami Lakes, higher Leah. You know, if you Google MMA Masters uh, Miami, you, you're going to find us very easy, easy access. we like uh, five, ten minutes away from the Miami International Airport. So great it's location. It's great location, man. Great location. Amazing. Thanks a lot for the interview. A pleasure to talk to you guys. And thanks for bringing Kobe to us. <laughs> Thank you, man. It was a pleasure to talk to you guys too, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcelo. Keep it up the good work, man. Always a pleasure to talk to you.